Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think so. I hope so. All right. There we go. Well, looks like people are starting to come in. It's a couple of minutes before two. I am live. Hello and, uh, and happy Super Bowl day. All right, who we have here? Ron, Don, Tom, Laverne. Martha, Warren, Sheila. Hi, everybody. Can you hear us? Can you see our standby screen? Let me know. That would be nice to know. Spunky. Sunny Ohio. Hmm. It's sunny here in Florida, too. A little chilly, though, actually. Ah, Tom, you... You've taken advantage of that big TV screen, huh? Hey, Bill. And Karen, I hope you're there. Loud and clear, that's nice to know. Thanks, Ron. Cool. Wow. <clears throat> it's us. Hello and welcome to episode number 184 of What Does This Button Do? It's an educational show about smartphones and technology with us geeks on tour. Today's beginner's lesson is what is Google Lens and how do I use it? But first we have a quick start tip. What do you have there, Chris? Well, this is a tip on Google Lens. We're gonna have lots more, but I was just wanted to start off right away. You can use Google Lens to identify a product in a photo and even find a link to buy it. So for example, if you take a photo, which I did of this blue snowball microphone, you press the you open it up in Google Photos, that's a key. And there is this third button over is the Lens button. Tap that and Lens tells you what it is that you're looking at. Think of it like looking at the world through Google's glass, Google Lens. You're looking <laughs> at the world through a Google search lens. It can tell you anything you want to know. Let me show you on my phone. This happens to be my Samsung, but because it's Google Photos, it works the same on an iPhone. So go to Google Photos. Find a picture of a product or take a picture of a product. So here is that snowball microphone and there is the lens button. Just tap it and you'll see all these dots. It's analyzing the photo and it sees it sees that it is a blue snowball USB microphone. Now these images don't have any links to them, so I'll scroll down and see if I find any more. I still, I expected to see an Amazon, so let me tap on the search button, and then maybe this little shopping cart to see if it's gonna get better results. And then you can even crop. You say, well, maybe if I just get closer to the actual device. There we go. Now there's a search. And I can buy it from Best Buy or Amazon or eBay. Let's try another one. 
So at this RV rally where we were last week, there was a, an exercise session in the morning that, had, that was using a video of a walking exercise. And I went. So proud of myself. <laughs> As you should. I didn't go. <laughs> and, and I really liked it. So I said, gee, what was that video? Well, I went over and found where the actual video in the cover was, and I took a picture of it. So let's see. I tap the lens button, and now this one comes up right away, and I can buy it from Target or Amazon or Walmart or Best Buy. So that's, that's my first little tip about lens. You can take a picture of any product, use the lens button to not only tell you what the product is, but give you links to buy it right there. Cool. Yes, we need to. All right, it's time for us. Hi, I'm Jim. And I'm Chris. And we are Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your Android phone or your iPad tablet? And how do you learn? about these amazing devices. Well, we are technology geeks. We are old technology geeks, also known as propeller heads. That's us <laughs> little hats. And we do a lot of traveling, so that's how we come up with Geeks on Tour. Our website is geeksontour.com, and you'll find all 184 episodes of this show on the menu item called Weekly Show. All right. Well, Chris, where are we now? We're home, but just barely. <laughs> we got home last night after being a week in Tampa at an RV rally, the Discovery Owners Rally. That's a picture of, of me teaching Google Photos. I like to hold up this cloud. <laughs> it's kind of fun. And then next week, we're going to be at Riverside RV Park teaching for the week. Those are those two red dots over there. But I think you've gotten spoiled with our our fast internet and your home studio <laughs> here. That's for sure. I was... We had okay service at in Tampa where we were, and they had good Wi-Fi there, which is unusual for an RV park, although it's getting better. And, yeah, I'm much happier here in my home studio where I have fast Internet, and you're right, I've been spoiled. Mm. <laughs> All right. I want to remind everybody about the Backstage Pass. It's for premium members only, and we are member-supported, So, and we really want to thank our members. You guys are the best. So we have this online meeting after this show, and you can join us. There's a link in an email that we went out, or you can go to the geeksontour.com member login. Log in there, and you can join us. You'll find the link on that login, you know, the, the member dashboard. Okay. Well, we want to say hello to our live members. We have some people out there. And, okay, Laverne and Martha and Warren, Sheila, Spunky, Tom, and Ron, Bill and Karen, Don, Liz, Mary Helen, Sue from Ottawa, Ontario. Er. Her. <laughs> Her. 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 <laughs> uh, Linda's gone out for a bike ride. We'll see you later. Yeah. You can catch us you. on. <laughs> yeah, it is too nice to stay in today. Uh, don't forget the lens button when I have a product in a Google's photo. We'll no, he says, yeah, he doesn't get the lens button. Oh, we'll talk about that. And yeah, Bonnie should. from Tampa. We'll see about that. Okay. Joel. Works on phone only, not on computer. Correct. And correct. Mobile devices. It does work on the Chromebook, too, though. Okay? With, with an Android. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It has to, has to have all that stuff Maybe in Android there. Android up. Okay. Are you ready? So let's do some more on Google Lens. It's amazing how much this, this thing can do. And that is the button. So there are... 
two main ways of using Google Lens. One is to just use your phone live to interpret the things that you're seeing in front of you. So it's a live looking through Google's lens at what you, is around you. You do that by using the standalone app on an Android. If you go to the Android Play Store, you can get the standalone app. And this is, it is not available in the Apple. We'll get to that later. You can also live interpret around you from the Assistant or from the Google app, the G. Both of those have a little lens button that looks live. And if you have a Pixel 4 like Jim <laughs> does, you even can do it straight from your camera. You just open the camera app, there's a little more, and lens. So that's doing it live. You know, you're... And, and we did this when we were in, in Europe. You know, there was... We were in Italy, and the signs were in Italian, and we just wanted to know what the sign was. We didn't want to take a picture of it and study it later. We wanted to know what it said. So you can just open up Google Lens, point your phone at the sign, and it and it will translate. Yeah, we did that in Croatia, too, in the grocery store, and it we weren't sure what we were looking at, and it told us. It was pretty cool. That was actually using Google Translate, but now you oh, can do it with Lens. But, yeah. yeah, it works together, yeah. and Lens will translate, so it's really cool. And the second way is on a captured image. So you can either do it live or on a photo that you take, and if you use Google Photos. It has to be Google Photos, and and I don't know, Tom, maybe you need to, an update to Google Photos or it's also not on all phones. You have to have a pretty good phone, relatively new, and you have to have a good internet connection. So you wanna, you ready? You wanna show them how to do it on your, on your Pixel 4? Okay. Now this, this phone is only what, two weeks old? And, Maybe. and it really is pretty amazing. And he's going to work a little bit of magic here. Wow, that was quick. Hey, it came right up. I'm <laughs> surprised. Okay, so this is showing my screen of the of my Pixel 4 XL, and I'll go to the camera. I'll touch the camera. And this is a a teapot, a collapsible teapot, and I saw it somewhere, and I said, "Oh, I want one." So I actually use this. This is ours now. Okay. So explain what first. How did you get? <clears throat> Okay, you're just in the camera. I'm just in the camera. So in order to use the lens part of it, it's over here on the more and lens. So I just point it at whatever, touch it, and it finds it. It's a folding travel kettle. I can buy it here in AliExpress. And I bet you, if I look far enough, I can find it on Amazon, which is probably where I bought it. All right. Or you can even search right from here, too. I mean, if you don't like the options that it gives you, the, uh, the G search there. And here's every, everywhere. Everything. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's, that's live. Let's do another one. Okay. So this shell, we say, gee, I forget. What is this shell called? And now this is a real shell. All and right. he just points the camera at it with the Google Lens. And it comes up with a chambered Nautilus. Which is... That, I, yeah, <laughs> yep, that's right. That's what this is. I know that is okay. true. Okay. How about a book? So you're at somebody's house, and you see... And they're saying, oh, you got to read this book. This is a great book. All you do is... You need to take your hand off of it. There you go. <laughs> Let's see. It finds the book. Whoop. Found Willie Nelson. What was I looking at? The Tao of Willie. All right. And it finds it right there in... 
Okay, yeah, it still hasn't given you a way to buy it. Now, I, so he, what did you do? I tapped on the search. On the search. Yeah, and so it gives it you ways to buy. So sometimes it pops right up with everything that you need. Sometimes you have to tap on something else to get to get what you want, right? Anything else? Yes, translate. All right. Oh, translate. Um, and here, now, years ago, I traveled to China with my mom, and the tour guide gave us this little note for when we are we're not going to be with the guide so we could hand this to a taxi driver and it should say please drive me to the park hotel this is in english but here it is in chinese let's see what google lens does with that all right so we're here and i want to tap on the translate that's the one over on the left Please send me to Park Hotel, thank you. And then the address in Chinese. And do you see how that was live? Yeah. Now we have to have an internet connection, and it works best with a good, fast internet connection. So this is, this is cloud computing. This is pretty cool stuff. Okay? Okay. Oops. Put a light on things. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What else? Well, I don't know. Do you want to do one of these? <laughs> oh, just, just for fun. Now, this is a menu that I brought back from China. And it's, the translate is not perfect. Let's, let's take a look. All right. So here we are. Go to more. Now, there is English Lens. translation on the, right on the menu. So this first one says braised shrimp. Shall I cover it up so you can? So let's see what Google thinks. Frankincense? Oh, there it says something. Frankincense shrimp. Pot. I don't know. All right. <laughs> the next one is supposed to be braised snail. Spicy hop snail. Well, okay. Pretty cool. <laughs> but It might not always get it absolutely correct, but man... It's amazing. What a help I'm, in a restaurant when you're in China. It's <laughs> crazy that you can do all of this stuff now and that you were never really able to do before. You'd have to bring somebody along with you. I saw somebody doing some live translation using a, a Google Home the other day, and that was pretty cool, too. They went from French to English or Spanish ah, okay. to English. Yeah, right in a store. It was pretty cool. Now, this next one is a little bit more complex than just a simple demo so we have a video okay hi this is chris gould with geeks on tour and this quick video is showing you how to use google lens in a restaurant to read the menu or split the bill lens and then just point at a menu tap the fork and knife and it highlights their best sellers and then you can tap on any menu item and get more detail about it. Start with lens. Focus on a restaurant receipt and tell it I want the restaurant tools with the fork and knife. Then tap on the total and I get a tip calculator. It's saying that the tip on that would be 467 if at 18%. And then I can say, let's split that bill by two. And okay. And it tells me that each person owes 1623, including tip. It was pretty short, but still had to. So weird, huh? I mean, the things that you can do, and I'm sure we're only getting started, and I'm, I'm still going to show you more, but that was just things you can do with the Google Lens Live. And we showed you two different ways. With the Pixel 4, he opened the camera, tapped more, and the lens button was there. With the Android, we went into the standalone lens app that you can install from the Play Store. And on the iPhone, 
Let me show you since we really didn't. On the iPhone, it is the the Google app, the G. If you install the Google app on your iPhone and you tap it, I was already playing in here. Then right at the end of the search bar, there is the Google Lens Live, and you see all the same buttons down here. Okay. So yes, Lens on Android. We haven't done this one yet. You get it from the Play Store. Lens on iPhone, you get it from the, you don't get Lens. The Lens app is not available on iPhone yet, but the Lens functionality is available through the, through the Google app. You do need a pretty good phone, and you do need a pretty good internet connection. Lens on a computer? No. Nah. Not at all. No. Nah. No. Nah. This, is, this is mobile functionality. Period. So, Jim showed you how to live identify objects using his pixel. And now I, and boy, we, okay, <laughs> I guess we got ahead of ourselves. Yes, we did. Now, using Google Photos, and it really doesn't matter whether I use Android or iOS, so whichever one's under the camera right now, it is my Android. And I'm going to go, I just collected a bunch of samples. I made an album called Lens Examples. And I'm just going to go through some of them with you. Here is an arch. I know that this was in Utah, but I can't remember. Was that the delicate arch or was that, you know, what arch was that? Well, it's a pretty famous thing. So if I open it up and tap the lens button. The white dots analyze it. And then, well, it's telling me it's in Moab, but it's not telling me, ah, there we go. So I just tapped on the more and it keeps, keeps going, giving me search results. It says that's the Corona arch. Oh, I always get that wrong. So, that's how you identify landmarks using lens or buildings. You know, it would identify the Sears Tower or the Eiffel Tower or other famous buildings. Birds. Let's see here if I can get it a little bit bigger this way. <coughs> so these birds are big, big, and there's a, and they're <laughs> very prevalent in central Florida. So you say, what are those? You tap the lens button. Yeah, I thought it was going to make me go go vertical. And Florida sandhill crane. Yep, that's what they are. What else can we identify? Ah, here's a good one. See this QR code here? So this was, we were at a national park. And if you've been to tourist places in the last few years, you see that there's these QR codes all over the place that you can scan with your phone and watch a video about what happened here. Well, we didn't have time at while we were there, so I just took a picture of it. I took a picture of it, and notice how it's even such a small part of the picture, but when I tap on Google Lens, it sees that there's a QR code over here that will take me to a YouTube video. I tap on the link to the YouTube video. Below you are the tracks of what historically was known as the Southern Railroad of Mississippi. This rail line, which connected Vicksburg to Pretty Jackson cool. and Beach. Just way cool. So now I'll go back to Google Photos and see what else we got. Ah, so here was in a visit to Cuba, 
they have billboards and obviously the language, everything is in Spanish. So I want to know what this billboard says. I took a picture of it. I open it in Google Photos, tap the lens button, and now, now what? It's not translating it for me. It's, it's doing a search and finding all sorts of, stuff, sorts of stuff, but it's not translating. And I don't see the little translate button. What do I do? You tap on that search button, and now you see the other things you can do. I don't know why they're dimmed out, but there's the translate button right there. So you tap on the search to get more options. And voila, United and Productive Defending the Revolution. Is, <laughs> sounds like Cuba. <laughs> yeah, sounds like Cuba, is what that sign says. I tap the X to get out of there and then go back. Ah, here's another QR code. Now, you can't even see it, but I remember. I remember this place that it had, it was a bicycle trail. And this is a bicycle toolkit. And this little QR code here will give you instructions on using the toolkit as long as you know how to follow the QR code. Google Lens. And now that's awfully tiny, so I think I need to crop in so that it, it's getting the right part of the picture. So you just use the crop tool. I get closer to that QR code. I just did this earlier, but this is this is true. Don't you know? Don't give up if something doesn't work the first time, because I've had that happen several, several times that something didn't work, and later, later it did. It's that QR code is pretty small. There we go. D row fix it. Let's see if that. Yep. That's yep, it. that is the bike fix it station. But it's not the video about how to use it. Okay, so it's it's just identifying the the pole. Yeah. And right, it's, right. It's not identifying the QR code. Okay. Maybe we'll come back there <clears throat> later or maybe I'll I'll crop it in Google Photos. But it does work and it gives you videos about how to fix your bicycle using the tools that are in that pole. All right, what about dogs? <coughs> dogs and, and cats. So, so I say, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what kind of dog. And you, It's a cute dog. It's a sweet dog. I know that. <laughs> that, was, that was Lincoln. Um, and it says, well, that could be a toy bulldog or a continental bulldog. I think it's clear that it's some kind of bulldog. And I could try cropping in and getting closer. And notice whenever you make any change, it kind of does a reevaluation. Boy, that looks like he might be an Australian bulldog. <laughs> okay. How about this animal? <laughs> what did uh, somebody thought it was a, an elk? Oh, right. <laughs> Say, no, that's not an elk. That's a moose. I'm quite sure of it, but let's see if Google Lens knows. Yep. Bullwinkle. Yep, that's a moose. Okay. Now, how about a business card? So there's a business card of our travel agent, and watch what happens when you tap the lens button on that. It analyzes it. And it says, oh, I see a name, a phone number, an address, an email. Do you want to add that to your contacts? Wow. That's pretty cool. You know, I don't. She's already there. But maybe I just want to call her. It has recognized the phone number. And just from a photo in Google Photos, I can call somebody from the number that's on their business card. That's real handy. Or I can send an email. 
or I can go to the website. All, all from a photograph of of a business card. And there's still a few more. Copying text. So let's say, oops, I went, out, I went too far out. <laughs> Lens examples. I have this snapped picture of a newspaper clipping back from 1993. And that this is all I have of it. And I want, I want some of this text to put in an article that I'm writing now, for example. So if you tap the lens button and tap on text to notice, notice how it's highlighted all the text. So it has read it. I can tap on the text. Now I can adjust the up and down markers to the, the beginning and ending markers. And I can say copy text and to prove that it's been copied. Let's go some, let's go to a note taking app. I'll use Google keep and paste. Come on. <laughs> Did you copy it? Didn't I? No. You told it, you selected it, but I don't think you actually copied it. Tap on text to select. Okay. Let me just try this again. And copy, copy text. Okay. I definitely got copy text. Okay. All right. Now, back to Google Keep. Long press. Ah, it's not working for you. Reboot. Um, <laughs> I've been having issues with Google Keep lately, actually. Let's go to um, a, let's just go to an email. <laughs> and in the body of an email, let's say I want to paste that text. There we go. Now, notice it's not going to be perfect. And they're uh, not going to get any of the formatting. Right. But this is fully editable text. I have copied it from a picture and it is fully editable text and I can edit it. But most all of it, I'm just skimming through. It looks pretty accurate. Is that easier than typing and have, than having somebody dictate it to you and typing it all out or what? Well, if you're into plagiarism, it's a very handy tool. <laughs> there's that then. All right, there's one, just one more example of copying text, and that is, it. We stayed at a uh, Airbnb, and they left a note that included the password to the Wi-Fi. Right now, you know what a pain it is to remember and type in all that. How about? And there it is right there. Google Lens. Tap on the text I want to copy. Copy text. And now when I go to connect to the Wi-Fi and it's ready to ask me for the password, I can just paste it in. Nice. And I think one, this really is the last example I have here. And that is to add something to your calendar. Oh, great. So here, let's say that you're going by, you're downtown and you see a poster for a concert that you want to go to. Now, I took a picture of a, of a screen, but Willie Nelson is coming to town. All right. I'd love to go see him. I don't think we can, but <clears throat> I'd love to. And it has in here the date. If I tap the lens button and tap there for the date, create calendar event. Whoa. And now here, even more, it doesn't assume that you're using Google Calendar, which I am, but you could use Outlook or your Android calendar or your Apple calendar, whatever you have on your device. Okay. Well... I could I could go on. I yes, got more you could. here. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think that's 
I saw, I did see just one. Oh, here's a book that you have to have, right? I think everyone should have this book. <laughs> you want to say, well, how do I get that book? You know, you're somewhere, somebody shows you their book, you take a picture of it, you do Google Lens, and there we go. You could get it at Barnes & Noble or Amazon or Target. Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Ask us anything. We have a couple of questions in here. I think we do have a few questions, so uh, I don't have to come up with my own. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Works on iPhone or on phone only, yeah, Android or App or Apple iPhones. Not on computer. Not on the computer. And how do you use Google Lens if you don't have a cell phone? Well, I don't know that you can. You can't. You need these new mobile devices. It's time to come kicking and screaming into the late 19th century. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. You could get it. Didn't you say Google Home? The Google Home could do some of this? Oh, the Google Home. That's true. That's, that's not... Well, it that's could be, still another yeah, fancy it's device. another <laughs> fancy device. It has to have an internet connection. We'll do translation on the fly. It's pretty cool. Uh, okay, Pixel 3 does it. Pixel 3 XL has lens in the camera. Don says he doesn't find it in his 6S. A 6S? A 6S iPhone? If it's an iPhone, then you need to install... it. Has, it'll be in your Google Photos, or if you download and install the Google, Google app. The G. The G app. app. So the G app or the Photos should Warren have it. says plants... And bugs work well, too. Oh, I well have an too. example of a bug. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of plants. Where'd, where'd my bug go? Because, yeah, he's a cute he's a cute bug right here. So we look at that bug and say, what in the world is that? Google Lens tells me it's a large milkweed bug. That's or... good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And let's see, Sheila says she has the Pixel XL, and she doesn't want us to go to China anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we'll, we'll... I'd rather go to Mexico for their Corona than to China for <laughs> theirs. How about that? Okay. Uh, do you prefer using Lens app or using Lens in Photos? That's a good question. I don't... Uh... I guess it depends on where I happen to be. If, if if it's if it's a picture, obviously you're going to do it in photos because those pictures are already there. The camera is the tool that I use the lens on most of the time, at least so far. I'm mostly in a habit of taking pictures of stuff. And then you so if it's something that fact. so for example, if I wanted to find out what this is, I absolutely would take a picture of it. Now a menu in a restaurant. You know, maybe that's something that I, I want to know right now, and I absolutely don't care to keep it. Then I would use I would use the camera. I didn't. I say it would work on Pixelbook. Well, if have you actually tried? I it? haven't actually tried it on the Chrome. So I I, I would. Uh, but Michael Daniels is here. He might know for ah. sure. He he has the Pixelbook, I believe, and. It works on caterpillars too. Caterpillars. Does it does it show you what the what the chrysalis is going to look like? What the butterfly gonna is going like. to like after the after the. We'll have to check that one out. That looks like a lot of fun. So now I know how to do much more of my photos for my genealogy. All right, thanks and thank you, Michael, for the for the super chat. You guys. Thank are, you, Michael. You're wonderful. Okay. Here we go. All right. I think we're back to our to our slides, and we can sign up. up for our newsletters at GeeksOnTour.com. Subscribe to this channel, become a premium member at Geeks on Tour, and get Mrs. Geek's Guide. You can do that on Amazon. Questions? Anything new? I want to thank you. Backstage Pass, reminding you that there is an online Zoom meeting right after this. And you're welcome to join us. All our premium members can come in. 
You can come in just with a computer. It works better if you have a camera and a microphone so we can see and so hear So like a you. laptop. Yeah, they work great. Yeah. But you can do it even on a smartphone or a Chromebook. <laughs> Absolutely, a Chromebook. Okay. All right. I invite you to become a member, and thank you for our, our members already. And that's how we are able that's to... how we make our living. That's how we're able to do this stuff. See our website, geeksontour.com, and our weekly class menu. Scroll down to see all of the archives. YouTube stuff. Okay. All right. I think we're about there. Did you learn something? Time for questions. This is our review. That's right. Mm -hmm. Every episode ends with review questions. Google Lens is available on Android, iPhone, computer. Android, yes. iPhone, yes. Computer, no. Okay. True or false, you must take a picture before using Lens. False. You can use it live. Yeah. If you use Lens on a business card, you can A, add to contacts, B, make a phone call, C, copy text from the card, or D, all of the above. All of the above. True or false, iPhone can only use Lens from within Google Photos. False. If you install the Google app, the G, Google Search app, there is a Lens button there. And you get that from the App Store. From the App Store. To translate text, you need to tap the button, the Translate button, and if you don't see it, what do you tap? The three-dot menu, B, Search, or C, the Text to Translate. It's the search. What I'm talking about is there's like five different buttons to use, including the restaurant button on Google Lens. But sometimes you only see the search button. Tap on the search button and the others will appear. Hopefully. If you don't get the results you want, A, wait, B, crop the image, C, ask a friend, or D, reboot. I say crop the image and, and then wait because it, it does continually analyze, but it kind of reanalyzes whenever you make a change like, like cropping the image. Okay, cool. Well, Chris, what's the app that lists all of our weekly shows? You mean the web page? I don't think. We what's the app? <laughs> <laughs> what's the web page? <laughs> Geeksontour.com and the menu item is weekly class. All our episodes are listed there, along with the show notes for members. And what's the webpage that lists all of our recent newsletters? Geeksontour.com, and the menu item is blogs and news. And all of those newsletters are free. And why do people pay $60 a year to join Geeks on Tour? Our member benefits include being able to ask us any question on our Q&A page, to gain access to our hundreds of tutorial videos, learning guides, and ebooks, to get written notes of these shows, and some people join just to say thank you for all the stuff we give for free. And then the backstage pass. That's something that's really handy. And there's a new benefit coming up. I'm just I'm starting on courses. Yeah, be careful. <laughs> It'll be fun. Jerry, Next. thank you. Yes, thank you, Jerry. And everybody else out there. I think that's about it for this week. That's Trying it. to keep them a little bit shorter. Yeah. <laughs> but and give us a little bit of time so that we can get our get set up for the backstage pass. So that'll be in just a couple of minutes. If you all want to get over there, we'll get that started. And we'll see you soon. We'll be backstage shortly. Keep pushing those buttons. That's it. See you next week. <laughs>